What's up, y'all? How's it going? So I got my next part of my vinyl collection, so nothing else important to add, really. So let's get into it. But first, what you can hear in the background, if you can hear it. The Center Next, Reborn Through Flames. So their fourth record, now I have three of the first four. The third record, the one before this, needs to get repressed pretty badly, but yeah. Definitely one of the more under underappreciated Swedish stuff little bands from back in the day. Not my favorite by them, but it's definitely a good record. Their first like five or six are all awesome in my opinion, but yeah. Good band, and it's pretty funny because they there was one song that I hadn't listened to this in a while, and there's one part I heard, I'm like, this kind of sounds familiar. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, oh, track five. They cover Under the Guillotine from Creator, which usually when death metal bands cover a thrash song, it doesn't work a lot of the time, but they actually chose a good song to cover, so it actually works, so. That's a pretty rad. And it's kind of a short record, so I have another one queued up in the player just because I talked too long, I'll show you that if it gets to it, but yeah. Alrighty. So first up, let's go to Canada. I got three albums by this band. Sacrifice, so we're talking about the first three. Torment and Fire from I think 85 or 86. Forward to Determination, the best in my opinion from 87 and then 1990. Soldiers of Misfortune. So these all three are kind of different, which this one is definitely the most raw, kind of almost like first wave death metal sounding like Possessed or Early Onslaught, but the sum their best record, not my favorite, but I think that's the best cover art too. I love that painting. Anyway, there's that. Back. Guys in the band. Which I think they... I know some members left at one point, but I think they have all the original members back in the band, which is pretty sweet. So yeah. And this is the only one that's on colored LP. The other ones are black, so I'm not going to bother showing that. Let's put that through War on Music. Never heard of that label, but oh well. Yeah. Sacrifice, so if you want them at the most rock, this is the good one to check out. So Torment and Fire. Then easily the best in my opinion, Forward and Determination. Again, let's put that through War on Music. And so is this one. Yeah. I said 87. Definitely the best. Kind of more like German thrash sounding almost, whereas that one sounds more like US, like early death metal ones. Definitely sounds more just aggressive thrash than proto death metal, but anyway. Front of that one. Cool cover with, I like the logo, very simple but awesome. Back. Dudes, just in black, so I'm not pulling that out, but yeah. If you want to check out one record by this band, this is the one I suggest, but all the first three are awesome, obviously. This record's good, just a little bit change of pace. I, I still think the first two are better, but this one just has one of my favorite songs by them. The opening track, As the World Burns, definitely one of their best songs. But I believe there was a music video for that track also. Anyway, front, back, guys, again. War on Music, I think these came out a couple years ago, because I bought all three at the same time. I think it was 2021 when they put these out, but yeah. Sacrifice, awesome band. I don't have the... I think they've done two albums after. I know they did one in 93 that was more like proggy and experimental. Not bad, just not as good as the first three. And they did a comeback record I think in 2009. It was okay, but definitely I think the worst record so far. But it was still good though. That's not as good as the rest, so yeah. Sacrifice, awesome. I know they put out a new single, I think it was... Late 2021 or early 2020, so if, uh, I know it was late 2021 or early 2022, but who knows if they're doing a new record, it'd be cool to see, but we'll see. Yep. Sacrifice. Okay, so I have almost every record by Necrophobic. I'm only missing the third Antichrist and the Womb of Lilith, so I got the rest. Nocturnal Silence, maybe the best record. It's either between this and this for me. Dark Side. Don't have the third one, obviously, like I just said. Blood Hymns, different record for them. I'll explain that in a minute. I never know how to pronounce this. Hermistim. Hermistim. Death to All. Mark of the Necrogram. Yeah, Mark the Necrogram. 
and then Dawn of the Damned. So these guys play a mixture of like old school Swedish death metal with a little bit of melodic black mixed in there for good measures, but I would say it's mostly like a death metal riff style with like black metal production and vocals, I guess is a good way to describe their music, but I don't know, they have a very unique sound, they don't sound like anybody, especially for the Swedish death metal scene in the early 90s, but for some of their best record, maybe it's either this or Dark Side, like I said, but anyway, I don't really like that cover, it's kind of weird looking, but anyway, there's a the front, back, and all these are in black, so I don't bother pulling any of them out, but yeah. Plus through Hammerhead, I don't know if it did the OG, but I think it was 93 originally, but yeah. Great record, you can't go wrong with any of the albums, honestly, but if you want to check out one, just start with the debut, work your way forward, you will be, I think, very satisfied. Then Dark Side, probably my favorite by them. I mean, it does have Spawn by Evil and Nailing the Holy One on it, so that kind of makes it, up, that kind of brings it above the debut, but yeah. Cool paint. I'm assuming that's Necro Lord. It looks like his style, but correct me if I'm mistaken. I love their logo too. And yes, they were one of the bands where they never changed their logo because I know some bands did it, and that was like the beginning of the end when they changed their logo. But luckily, they kept the logo the same the entire time. So thank you guys for that. Yep. Hammerhead again. I think this was like '97 or something. '96, '97, somewhere in that area. This one I think was early 2000s. This is the most different. This is definitely the least black metal sounding and the most straight up old school death metal one. I say that because the guitar tone, they didn't really have the, they didn't have the HM2 style at all. This, the, it was the only album where they used that on their guitar, so it definitely sounds more straightforward Swedish death metal sounding instead of like being kind of black metal-ish. So if you want them at the least black metal sounding, this is definitely the one for you to check out, but anyway. There's the front, back. Of the first five, definitely my least favorite, but it's still an awesome record, obviously. Yeah. Blood Hams, and then probably the one with the best cover, Simple Burning Church by Love the Just two main colors, blue and yellow, very effective. You can see the cool, like, ghost guys in the background, too. Favorite sign here, probably Bloodshot Eyes and I Strike with Wrath and Black Hate. Yep. I know I'm not describing these very much, but I'm sure most of you know what necrophobic sound like, so there's not really any point. Death to All, this is again one of my favorite songs by them, Revelation 666. Love that song. But besides that, probably for those who stayed satanic or Temple of Damnation, a couple other of the Stand out for me. Uh, this was put out through Century Media, and this was Hammerhead. I think the first three I have are through Hammerhead, and this one is also Century Media. I think who they've been signed to since this record, they've been on Century Media. But yeah. They don't really have that Century Media death metal sound. They don't like Dark Clan Credit You, which is who I think of the stereotypical like Century Media band for whatever reason, but. Oh well. Yeah, these are both Century Media, so I thought, okay. Then, Mark of the Necrogram 2018. Like I said, I don't have Womb of Lilith from 2015, which that's probably my least favorite. Not bad, but I think they tried to be more experimental, and I think they did it sort of stuck up to what they were best at. But not a bad record, just kind of different for them. Plus, a lot, I think, the guitarists that have been on. The band, I think, since this, they both left for some reason and then came back, and they've been back since the last two records, but... Oh, well. It looks like it's kind of weird. Basically, like, the same building, this is just, like, a closer-up view, so it's like, guys, you couldn't come up with a better artwork, but... Oh, well. I remember this was definitely one of my favorite releases of 2018. I think this was the first one I bought once I became a fan of the band, because I heard them... I think 2016 is when I first discovered them, so this was the first new one I bought on release week or whatever, but yeah. Definitely in my top five of, I think, 2018, yeah. 
And then my album of the year for 2020, and I still stand by that, was this volume. I didn't think they were going to be able to talk top this one, but they somehow did. So guys, all I can say is good luck topping this. But Listen to the song Devil Spawn Attack, which has Smear from Destruction. They played that at MDF. That was, that was awesome, but... The only thing I would have made it better was if they had Smear, but I know Destruction was doing a US2 at the same time, so I don't think they were at MDF yet, because I think they played the final day, so... It would have been cool to hear him get, join them on stage, though, but I'm not going to play them. Yep. Necrophobic. Awesome band. Definitely looking forward to whatever they do next. Hopefully a new record this year, because it's already been three years since the last one, but we'll see. Yep. Necrophobic. Yeah, I knocked my phone over like an idiot. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm sure you all saw this coming. I saw this band live on Friday, so I figured it would be a good time to talk about them now. So I have, I think, 10 enslaved albums, so it might be a while. Holdings Land EP, obviously the original split with Emperor. Like Illegal Veldi, or Self Title, as some people call it for some reason. Frost. Ild. Arguably my favorite, Blood Hymn. Marjoram Brownlee Within. The one that Blood Hymn's not my favorite, it's this one Below the Lights. Grit here, in times, and the new one, him deal. So let's start at the beginning. So Hodain's Land came out with a split with Emperor originally, I think, in 1992, when Emperor put out their self-titled EP. But yeah. Of those two, I honestly prefer Emperor's side of the split. But this is definitely a essential early first release by these guys well not first release because they had a demo but first like actual readily available thing nice wide for this one so if you want them at their most primitive check out this or the debut though i think the debut is a lot better but yeah codain's land great release no was enslaved so it's obviously great I don't know why people call this record the self titled sometimes. It clearly says Viking Lego Veldi. Does it? No, it doesn't. I don't know why this copy doesn't say Viking Lego Veldi, but I know that's what it's called, so kind of weird, but oh well. Let's put out through By Norse Music. I've never heard of that label, but I think it came out in like 20, yeah, 2016, okay, so. Originally, I think like 93 or something like that, but anyway. Fun. Their best logo, definitely. Which I have a t uh, my I have a long sleeve shirt of the f of Frost and it has that logo on it. Super glossy. Which, yeah, I think the let me see. These tracks are Viking Lego Veldi's lyrics in the original language Icelandic. So you have the lyrics all in Icelandic and in English, which is pretty cool. So I'll show you that better. I know you probably can't see that because it's super glossy. My phone quality is not the best, but oh well. White. Double OP. So I'm not bothering showing you both are on the exact same color for both. Yep. One of my least favorites, honestly, but it still rules. Frost, to many of the best, definitely in my top five, but not the best in my opinion. But anyway, front, back. Those band pictures, especially this dude, is that IVR? No, it's a group my bad. Now, there's IVR. And then Trim, who obviously would join Emperor. Gatefold. Oh, he's a lyrics. Yeah, they're all in English this time, okay. 
this was put out through Osmos in 2017. This was just a blue and gray merge. So this record is definitely definitely a big influence on atmospheric black metal that, that would become like 10 years later. If you ask the guys in like Walls in the Throne Room and Aglock if they listened to this band and they said no, I, could, I guarantee they were lying. There was no way in hell they would not listen to this, but oh well. Though this record I think does that a lot better than all those other bands, but that's just me. L, some people love favor, I definitely see why, especially the opening track is totally like Viking Air Bath we worship, but Goofy Cover is, is that, I can't remember, is that Ivar or Grutal? I think it looks like Grutal, but I think it is. Anyway, fun with the dork. Back. Crazy band pictures, it's hilarious. Atold, which when I saw them, they played mostly like post 2000 stuff, which I have no problem with because for me, they literally could have taken every song they've ever written, put the song titles on a dart board, throw darts, whatever songs they hit, that would have been their set list and it would have been amazing regardless. So. I swear these guys are like allergic to writing bad records. They don't know how. At least for me, they don't. I know, I know some people after L, they say they suck, which I definitely do not agree with, but to each their own. Blood Him may be my favorite, definitely my favorite of the first four. It's more aggressive, and I would say there's almost like a thrash metal influence on this. Not like. It's fast, but definitely in like a more traditional speed metal thrash way. Fast, not like a mud, super blasty thrash, but anyway. Front full piece at this time. Again, goofy ass pictures. Gatefold. Yeah, the lyrics are in Icelandic and in English, which you can't see that with the shit. So that's kind of annoying because the font's basically the same as the background color, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to read. But oh well. Again, put that through Osmos, which I know they were signed to Osmos for a while, so it makes sense. And this one actually matches the cover art, so good job, Osmos. But most of the time, they're good at doing that, except one of those Immortal records I showed last time. The Piss Yellow for Battles of the North is a bad decision, but anyway. Definitely my favorite of the first four, well, first five, if you count the EP, which I guess you could. Majum Beyond the Within. Even more aggressive than Bloodham going almost borderline, kind of like Modic material, but honestly a lot more interesting than a lot of Modic, which I have a good chunk of the Modic stuff, but I definitely think they did that style better than Change Again, which if you know Enslaved, they definitely only fit to change style, unlike a better, another band, Dark Throne, when they change style, it actually works, but oh well. Then I don't have the one before that, it's probably my least favorite though it's still like a 7 out of 10 but that one's like the one that took me a while to get into but this I think they I think the one before this was definitely their most progressive and kind of weird at that point and honestly in their career I think that's definitely their most challenging record at least for me it is this one is more like oh my god just not go so crazy on this one but definitely I would say this record you could hear they were like getting kind of more progressive but Especially the keys, you, they sound like almost like a Eloy or Hawkwind record. I don't know what I'm hearing, but listen to those keys and go listen to Eloy. You will hear it. They, they definitely listen to a lot of like 70s frog and space rock at this point. But anyway, kind of weird cover art. Right? You can't really tell what that is very really good, but oh well. Back again, Osmos. I is, he is the song I was telling you about. You probably can't hear that, but whatever. Nice clear little splatter uh, mode, I guess you'd say, not splatter. Yep. Of the progressive era post, I'd say probably post this one. This is definitely my favorite. Which I know, I don't, I don't have Issa or Rune, those are te definitely two of their best records, easily top five both of them, but 
for some reason those albums need to get repressed again so they have a pain in the ass to find but oh well then we tier ranking the discography would be kind of pain in the ass because everything they've done is awesome i don't know where i would put this one but it wouldn't be in the top five but it wouldn't be down the bottom bottom five either so it'd be somewhere in the middle but anyway there's the front Talk through nuclear blast. Yeah, I didn't even sign a nuclear blast since 2012. So below the was like 04 to 012, so I'm definitely missing quite a few, unfortunately. But it's one of the cases where I want them only on LP. I'm, I'm not selling for the CDs, but I need to wait for them to get repressed again because I'm not paying $60 for each of them. That ain't happening, but I'll wait and get them eventually. So, yeah, retier. And then of the albums from the 2010s, I think this is definitely the best in my opinion in time. It was definitely a super strong record, so if you want to get into some of the modern stuff, this is definitely the one I suggest. So that's the Nuclear Blast again, 2015. Double LP, nice. Gray. And then the newest record, Hemdio. So this record I like better than E and the one before. Um, this one, I like this album more than the last one and more than E. But it's not as good as In Time, so it's definitely, I think, better than the last two, but... That's not really say much because they are allergic to any bad records, like I said. Anyway, simple cover up, but for this album, it actually works. I think this definitely fits the music, at least the cover up does, I mean. Back again, put that through Nuclear Blast, like I said, for the other ones. Yeah, Nuclear Blast 2023. So this year, I've been terrible at checking out new releases, but there was no way I wasn't gonna buy this, so it had to be done. The Nuclear Blast kind of sucks, so I bought it on eBay because the last three times I bought from Nuclear Blast, they've kept my order with zero explanation why. So, screw Nuclear Blast, but whatever. So, yep. Enslaved, awesome band, and I will eventually, I'm on a mission to get them all, but we'll see. That's going to take a while because I still have like five or six to go, but I'll show you more, I guess, when I get them. So, yep. Enslaved. Awesome band. If you saw my favorite bands of all time video, you obviously knew I was going to show them eventually. Alright, so that was like 10 minutes talking about Enslaved. So if you didn't like them, I guess I would say I'm sorry if you don't like them. Get better taste, but I'm joking, kind of. So next up, let's go to Sweden for something completely different. Tiamat. I got three of the first, well, the first... The debut in the third and fourth. Sumerian Cry. Their best in my opinion. Clouds. And then Wild Honey. So these all sound like they're completely from different bands. So this record is it's a straight up like old school Swedish, Swedish death metal album from the early 90s. I think it was 92 plus through Back on Black, I don't know who did it originally, but this was a 2013 press of this one, so yeah. Definitely the, I would argue the only straight up old school death metal sounding record, but definitely a very unique sound if I had to compare it to anything. Maybe God Macabre, I think is a good comparison. Definitely not like Dismember or any of those other bands, but definitely I would say on the more like almost doomy or heavier side, so like God Macabre, but yeah. Stellar record. Then... Clouds. These two I think honestly make kind of a good pair. So if you like if you are a fan of these three from Paradise Lost and you want something kind of in that vein, definitely check out these two by TMF. But though honestly I think this did this style the best of any of these albums, but that is just in my humble opinion. So instead of being like death metal, it's more like 
kind of gothic atmospheric rock metal, I guess. But I would say the vocals are more like clean and kind of what like Nicholas Holmes is doing. It's not guttural, so it's more like a kind of like yelly style, but I don't know, not like guttural death metal vocals, but you, if you know that era of Paradise Lost, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So go listen to Draconian Times and then you'll hear what I mean for this with the vocal wise. But I would say this is more like atmospheric and doomy and less kind of upbeat than the Paradise Lost records were, but yeah. Great cover art though. This is definitely my favorite record by TMF. This is a awesome one. And then Wild Honey, to many of their best records, I definitely can see why this album is fantastic as well. Definitely my second favorite behind Clouds, but yeah. Let me see. Oops, my bad. So this was put out through Back on Black 2013. Magic Underground Majesty. I have no idea who that is. Oh, Century Media. Never mind. So Century Media, 2019, and then this was Transcending Records in 2022. Yep. All awesome. So honestly, after T Matt's fifth record, they kind of lost me. But their first five were all stellar. Which, yep. T Matt, great band. At least they used to be. But like I said, they kind of lost me after their fifth one. What was the Skeleton Skeleton? Skeleton Skeletron was the last one I cared about, and after that, no bueno. Alrighty, so we'll talk about Napalm Death for a little bit. Sadly, I only have four by them. I know, I know, I need to get more, but I have. Uh, what is it? Smear Campaign and The Code is Red, Long Live the Code on cassette tape, which you can see I moved my tapes to be up there. They'll show my cassettes eventually, but. So what I have by them is Harmony Corruption, my favorite Utopia, The Return to Form, Enemies the Music Business, and Time Waits for No Slave. And this might be blasphemy, but I'm not honestly a huge fan of the first two records, which I know I'm probably like, what? You don't like the first two? They're okay, but my favorite thing with me doing with Napalm was the EP they did right before Harmony Corruption, the last thing he did. I think it was the last thing with him and Bill Steer. Fuck, what was that called? I can't remember, but if, if you know the early EPs, you know the release I'm talking about. But I, I'm sure I'll remember the name as soon as I'm done making this video, go figure. But anyway, Harmony. Definitely the most different of the first four. There's no grind in this record at all. It's just straight up them like doing a Floridian death metal style record with 1990 which some people don't like it because of that i think this is an awesome record i don't understand the hate it gets sure if you're a grind purist you'd be pissed but i'm not a grind purist so i don't care great record great record regardless yeah i think this one song had what song was it unfit earth yeah unfit earth had guest vocals from john tardy and glenn benton which is pretty awesome Terrible cover art though, I don't know what they were thinking, but anyway, back, dudes in the band, the first album with Barney, and then definitely my favorite by them, the, this is to me a perfect 50-50 mix of grindcore and death metal, so definitely a good like combination of the two, the perfect mixture at least for my taste, this is I think 1992 on Earache, so yep, yeah, 20, 2017 Earache reissue. And then this is a 2017 year for issue. I bought these two separately though, but I think they would both die at the same time, but yeah. Better cover up, but still pretty weird. Then the back, using the band. Yep. If you want to get into the, it, well, for some, if you're not a, if you're not a big grind fan, you want to check out some Napalm. This is the one I suggest, because a perfect mixture of death metal and grind, but it'll get you further into grind, so yeah. Utopia, then skipping a bunch because honestly, through Emptiness to Spare, the record after Utopia is super underrated. That record is awesome, but it's more like a mid paced kind of like hardcore death metal album almost. And then after that, they did some records that were garbage, like Inside the Torn Apart and Diatribes. No bueno, those were terrible. And then this definitely they were turn to form, and for me, they've been solid. Like, Again, since this record, the last like 20 years, they've been awesome, so yeah. Let's see, yeah. Recorded May 
through June of 2000, I think it came out in 2000 or 2001, so well, it's been like 22 years since they've been great again, so and they've been super consistent since then, at least for me, they have been, but yeah. I would say their later stuff, to me, it's definitely closer to Utopia, but even more grind, so I would say it's like probably 70% grind, 30% death metal, or like 75, 25, but anyway. Not full grind like the first two, but oh well. And those two I have on tape, but hey, let me show those really quick. I'm gonna do a tape video eventually, but these records both destroy, so I'll show you those really quick. But of the modern stuff, definitely my two favorites, especially this record. This record is awesome. But yeah. If, you, if you're on the fence about the modern album, definitely give these two a spin. So that is smear campaign and the code is red long live the code but if you listen to one i suggest smear campaign but that is just my humble opinion and then time waits for no slave some people say this is their best record like in the entire discography i definitely see why it's probably top four or five for me but i would say the most grind of the modern era though they've gotten like more experimental in their Later use, which is definitely appreciated, so it's not the straightforward grind the whole time, but anyway. 2009? Yeah, 2008 Century Media is, a, I think, an OG press or whatever, so yeah. Napalm Death, awesome band. If I, if I see some more, I will definitely pick them up. Fear Emptiness definitely need, needs a repress. That is the killer record that gets no love. Well, I've seen it get more love recently, but in the olden days, because it was definitely a lot different, but. Oh well. Let's see if there's napalm. So one, two, three. So these next six records I'm gonna show is six different bands that only own one record from, so this might be all over the place, but oh well. So let's go to some Christian thrash from like Kansas or some shit. Opprobrium. Serpent Temptation, so they were called Incubus. They had to change their name because of some like butt rock band had their had was called Incubus, even though these guys came first. I'm not sure what the hell the deal was. Maybe the other band had better lawyers, so but, oh well. Super aggressive in your face thrash from the late 80s, 1988 to 2016 relapse reissue. To me, that sounds almost like a U.S. band trying to be Brazilian, but you could definitely tell it's still U.S. but with like the Brazilian fuck you in your face attitude. It was still kind of weird that they're Christians because it's so aggressive, but oh well. Every song in here destroys like the Battle of Armageddon, Voices from the Grave, Blasphemy, Prophecies, Hunger for Power. Yep. I need the second the second record, what's that one called? Beyond the Unknown. That record's more almost like a death metal album, but this one is more just aggressive thrash, so I prefer this one to the second one, but both are awesome. So yep. Incubus, screw the opprobrium, the Incubus, the other band can kick rocks. Alright, so this is some various, I guess, influential death metal from the mid 80s. Necrophagia, Season of the Dead, so these guys have a bunch of stuff, and honestly, most of it I'm not really familiar with, this is definitely my favorite of the ones I've heard, pretty sloppy early death metal, I think 87, you could definitely hear the br the blueprint for bands like Autopsy on this record, super like sloppy and kind of doomy and doji, which Autopsy and Incantation would carry on to do later, and honestly, I think Autopsy did this style a lot better, but this is definitely a Cool record regardless though, just not one of the like gold standard death metal records, but it is still good, obviously. I think it's put us through HH, yeah, HH records. Holocausto de la Morte is my second favorite. That one needs a repress badly, which if I see that one in a while, I'll pick it up, but yeah. So, if, again, if you're a big Autopsy fan, you want to know where they got their sound, definitely from this record, though, Autopsy honestly did it better. That just me. Alright, so let's go do some German thrash. I haven't spoken a bunch, 
spoken about a lot of trash in this video. So the debut from I think mid 80s, I'm assuming like 85 or 86. Iron Angel, Hellish Crossfire. So after this, this guy almost got like slightly power metal leap, but the second record is also fantastic after that. Eh, okay, but their first two are definitely their best, so. Though it's German Thrash, not super aggressive, I would say. It has more in common with, say, Paradox and Early Blind Guardian than, say, Sodom. So, definitely on the more traditional metal edge of Thrash than the dark, almost proto death metal sounding. Out bears, anyway, but anyway. Cool cover, I love that painting. Back, dudes in the band. Which I think, it's kind of weird that I think some of the guys left after the second record. They never did anything else ever again, which is kind of odd, but oh well. Nice yellow looking record. Sam if you're a fan of kind of more traditional, almost proto power metal, and you want some of that with a thrashy edge, definitely check this out. So, Iron Angel. And it's like early 80s power metal, not like cheesy fucking, I don't know, it's not super cheesy like keyboard heavy power metal that you would come to get later on. Alright, so here's a Norwegian black metal band, which this is definitely their best record in my opinion. That's why it's the only one I have on LP. Old Man's Child, Born of the Flickering. Terrible cover right though, no matter which way you hold it, it looks pretty stupid, but I think their debut from 96 or something, yeah, 1996. Definitely one of the better symphonic black metal records from the mid-90s though. Is it as good as stuff like Emperor or Abigail? Not really, or even, I think even early demo is better, but this is still a good record if you are a fan of the style though. Like I said, terrible of looks, I don't know. I like their logo though, so their logo almost makes up for it. Back. Cosmic Key Creations, who usually do a good job, but what this kind of annoys me, which with this record is they didn't label the sides, so good job, Cosmic Key. And look at this, is pretty cool. Little, I think that's side four, yeah, the side four, they did look cool. Etching, which some labels do that, they do a terrible job, but these guys actually did a Good job of doing that, so bravo Cosmic Key. I just wish the sides were actually labeled so I knew what I was supposed to play, but oh wow, it's me nitpicking. Yep, good record, just not as amazing as early Emperor. Though it's pretty hard to beat in the Night of Eclipse of Anthems. Can't blame them. Yeah. Here's the band that after this. I know people love their first three records, but honestly, after this, and besides this in the demo, I don't really care. Sentence, Shadows of the Past. I know, I know, people are yelling at me, me right now because I'm not a fan of North from here, so stop screaming, but... Their record's good, just compared to this, they sound like a completely different band, which their first... Three or four records, each of the... Each of the first of the three or four records definitely sound like a completely different band, but definitely the best in my opinion, just straight up old school finished death metal, so, yep. Cosmic Key Creations again, 2019 reissue, and the music just changed, so I'll show you what that is in a second, which you, I'm sure you can hear it, here's a hint. So obviously, with the creation, my decapitate, I'm almost done, so I'm not going into that, but yeah. Old school finished death at its best. And then, in my opinion, one of my favorite new album records of all time, definitely my uh, this might be a hot take, but if I had to say a favorite new album record that doesn't have Iron Maiden on the front, it's probably this record. Hot take, maybe. Which final general death penalty? Man, this record is a masterpiece. Definitely, I would say, of all the new album bands, they sound the closest to Black Sabbath, which, not a problem, but... 
Oh, see, I may even like this better than most of the 70, 70 Sabbath stuff, which I know, again, probably blasphemy, but man. This record is so great. If I'm in the mood for a new album, I don't want Maidens throughout, but I usually, I usually reach for it, but yeah. Fantastic. The second record's good, too, but this one is definitely the cream of the crop. Alrighty, last two, then we're done. Let's finish off with some Brazilian Black Death, I guess. Mr. Fire. So we got the debut, Wicca! and then the one with the longest title ever. The world is so good that who made it doesn't live here. Pretty appropriate um title, but of these two, I'd choose my favorite. Probably this one, maybe because it's the one I'm the more familiar with. But Go Waste It, the third record is also excellent. But this is their debut from my fifth, like '92, maybe. They have a very unique sound. They don't really sound Brazilian because I think when I think Brazilian metal, I usually think it's like more fast and crazy. These guys sound almost like more Italian. So, Mortuary Drake, if you're a fan of that band, definitely I would say check out some Mr. Fire. There's some their best, but I prefer this other one. And I think 97. Um, who put this out? So, this is a nuclear. Well now, yeah, NWN did that one, and this is put out through Hammerhead, so definitely my favorite record by them. Fun again, crazy long title. I love the logo. Which they even put out a record like three years ago that was pretty awesome too. So I think they've only done five, but I think after this it was like 2002 and 2019, so it took them a while, but their record was definitely awesome too. So. They don't have a bad record, at least for me, they don't. Here is the color, so nice blue, blue splatter. So yeah, man, if you want something like Mortuary, Drake, or slightly even more Defo influence, definitely check out some Mr. Fire. So that is, the world is so good that Humidity doesn't live here, and Wicca. Alright, you guys, that's it. So I have a different type of video for my next one plan, but... I'll see when I'll do that, so take care, thanks for watching.